Welcome to Chapter 5.5, Theoretical Probability. So these are the objectives for this section. Again, if you see this little image, please write it down, make a note of it. Okay, yes, you need to write this down. Definition, so theoretical probability. So all the probabilities that we have been doing so far are the theoretical ones. So just looking at, okay, if I have a coin and I flip it twice, what's the probability of that event occurring? That's really what theoretical probability is. With experimental probability, that root word being experiment, this is the probability of an event occurring based off of results. So now that's when I'm actually taking that coin physically and conducting an experiment and doing maybe five trials to see, okay, well, how many times does it actually land on heads? So please make sure this is written down. Pause if you need a little more time. Now, this is how it's set up. Theoretical probability, so what we are used to, it is favorable outcomes over total possible outcomes. Okay, so that's what we've been working with so far. So yes, again, you do need to write this down. Experimental probability. This time, it's the results from the experiment over the total number of trials. So let's say I have a coin and I want to see how many times heads pops up and I do it 10 times. I flip that coin 10 times. That 10 would be the total number of trials I did. And let's say out of all of those 10, I only got heads twice. So two times. The results from that experiment would be two. So the experimental probability as a fraction would be two over 10. So again, write this down. Even include those speech bubbles. Pause if you need to. So the probability notation, write this down. It's the same. The P of X. But we can get real fancy, kids. We can get fancy. We can do a P and a little subscript T. Subscript is being that little tiny T on the bottom for theoretical probability. Experimental would be the P E of X. So pretty much you're putting the first letter subscripted down. Make a note of that, please. All right. Now, what you can do is you can pause to write this portion down. Okay. All right. So this is actually taken from the textbook on page 185. And it is example two from the textbook. Now, a group of medical students wanted to determine the probability of having a girl and a boy in a two-child family. They used a random number generator to give them results for 20 families. So that's like our trials. 20 families. That's our trials. Call it that. How many times we did it, the, this experiment? Okay, question A. What is the experimental probability of getting children of two different genders? B, what is the theoretical probability of getting children of two different genders? C, compare the experimental probability with the theoretical probability. Now, over here on the left is our table. And this, these are our trials. Our 20 trials. Okay. And it tells us a girl's zero and a boy is one. All right. Let's continue. Let's start with A, doing that experimental probability. Okay, experimental probability is the following. So let's, um, so it's, oh, goodness, sorry. So the experimental probability, that's what we're looking at. So we're conducting the experiment. They did the experiment a total of 20 times. So that's our denominator. Okay, and we need to find out getting children of two different genders, two different 
genders. So the two different genders will either be zero or one. You can even have one or zero. This is what we are looking for. These two in this table. Okay. All right. So let's go through it because we need to find out what the numerator is, like what actually happened in their experiment. So family number one, they, nope, that doesn't have two different. How about family number two? Oh yes, family two had one, had two different. Family three, two different. Family four, nope, both the same. Okay, so you just continue on. You can even pause it and continue on for yourself to see how many you get. Just check it off all the ones that are different that are either one zero or zero one. Okay. So now how many is that out of the 20 families? the 20 families, how many is that? We have, oops, do a different color. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So now out of the 20 trials in this experiment, we have 11, 11 out of 20. That's our experimental probability. Probability, experiment, and that's same. Okay, now let's go over to B. B is the theoretical probability of getting children of two different genders. All right, so this is where we would use either a table or a tree, okay, to create this. So now it's beautiful outside. Whoops, go back here. Sorry, kids. I touched something there. Okay, so we're using a table or a tree. Now, when we look at this, we have two options. Okay, we start with a dot. This is the first child. The first child would be either a girl or a boy. Okay, then the second child Let's say the first child was a girl. The second child could either be a girl or a boy. But if the first child was a boy, you can still have for the second a girl or a boy. So again, this is theoretical probability. Now, how many total do we have here? So here's our options here. Let me do this in maybe red. So we have, if I look here to here, girl, girl here to here, girl, boy, here, here, boy, girl, here, here, boy, boy. Okay, we have a total of four. That's our total. One, two, three, four. Now, two different genders. Which ones are those? We have to be girl, boy. So here's our girl, boy, boy, girl, two, over four. That's our result. That's theoretical. That's the one that you've been working on for the last little bit. Now compare them. So our experimental of the same was 11 over 20. Okay. Our probability theoretical of the same was two over four. Now, if I'm gonna compare them, I want them to be the same denominator. So the lowest common multiple for both of them or the common denominator is actually 20. This would be 11, stays the same. And this one I multiplied by five. So multiply this one by five. Okay, so this one becomes 10. All right, now let's look at these. The probably the, the experimental and the theoretical now the experimental probability is greater than the theoretical probability. That would be a good comparison because it is actually larger now because they have the same denominator and you can see that is, it is larger. All right. 
that's our comparison. Okay. Please make a note of this. This is question five in your workbook. I want to make sure I get these questions out of the way. So it's very similar to what we just did. It looks at zero. This is the chart that's from the book right over here. It looks at zero is for pencil crayon. One is for crayon, it's just regular wax crayon. So when you look at it, you have to pick from a bag. Yeah, you're just choosing from a bag. So from row two all the way down, you have first pick, second, third, fourth, and so on. They do 20 picks, 20 trials. All right. So the first two picks. So let's look at row two, the second row labeled first two picks. When column B is first pick, it's a zero. That zero represents pencil crayon. The second pick is crayon. Okay, so that's what it stands for. So it's very similar, very, very similar to what we just did. Okay, there you go. Workbook pages 60 to 61. Make sure you please post an image to Google Classroom when you are complete so that I know you did it and you get your marks for it. Remember, if you need to go back, re-listen, re-read, finish up your notes.